Today we're going to start the Great Blue Heron project. We're going to use a technique, kind of a standard watercolor technique, where we're going to be very deliberate with our strokes, very transparent with our paint, and we're not going to toil over it too much. We're going to let the colors purposely run together and be very fluid. I'm just getting a little bit of the extra graphite off the um, area of the eye so I can get a nice strong yellow pigment there. So I'm going to start with my my deep yellow and again I'm going to, I'm going to use a very um, fluid version of this paint. I want it to be a strong color because the eye is really really chromatic very strong yellow here so we're just going to make sure we have the right consistency and then we'll start painting. And be careful in these little areas, guys, that you don't have too much paint in the heel of your brush, like back here. Sometimes water get water and paint gather there. It just kind of unloads right on your page. So in the area of the eye is, is one of the few areas in this painting that we're going to be super careful. The rest of it we're going to be really kind of letting things fly, and we're going to purposely make an effort to let the colors run together in a very transparent way. Now I'd make a suggestion right here. Take your hair dryer and dry this right away because when we're working so small, if I put the black in right now, the black would run right into that yellow and ruin it. So let's just hit it with a hair dryer. And now I'm going to take my ivory black, pop the center of that eye in. Again, I got to be careful not to overload my, my brush with paint and water. I want it to be fluid, but I don't want it to be so fluid that it's, it's going to run off my brush and ruin this little spot that I just created. So I'm also going to leave a little bit of a highlight at the edge to the right side of the pupil of the eye. And this is also kind of tough to um, make a really perfectly round pupil on something so small. So do your best to keep it round. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. I'm just going to try to fix this up just a touch. And again, working in these tiny areas, guys, it's not a bad idea to hit it with a hairdryer just to be on the safe side. I'll take a little bit of cobalt blue and I'm going to pop it right next to the pupil. And you can see the pupil is surrounded by a little bit of an orange color. I'm going to grab my yellow again. And now these colors, it's okay if these two run together. Because they are kind of blended in the photo. I'm going to go back to my black, my ivory black, and I'm going to surround the eye with some black. Again, I think I'm going to be on the safe side and just hit it with a hairdryer.
is that typically if we were going to leave the white of the pupil for the highlight, we would leave the white of the paper, but because this is so small and it's so hard to get that, that highlight to show up, we're just going to grab a little bit of white paint and make a highlight from that. Again, you want that to be dry before you put this in, guys, because it will run away on you. So we have a highlight right above the pupil here. And then we have a highlight within the eye, right inside the pupil. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of our um, cobalt blue black into this. I'm going to knock the intensity of the color down a little bit because I want to make sure I have enough water in the paint that I end up with a very light value, this blue. I'm also going to throw, as I look at it, just a touch of violet in it. Okay. All right, so again, I'm always testing my colors out first on my test strip. Now I'm going to surround the eye with this kind of light blue-violet. keeping the value very light. I'm, again, super transparent here, guys. And try not to overload your brush too much. It, it will try to start to get away from you. Just be careful. Notice how transparent my paint is, how the ratio of water to my pigment is. It's very, very thinned out. And this is a really classic watercolor style. So I'm looking at all these different variations in the feathers and the top of the beak. I'm just going to start laying them in. Now you want little kind of variations and, and, a, and a bit of a blotchy kind of a look here. That's what we're shooting for. And you'll see what I mean as I go forward here. I want these colors to really blend together really nicely. Okay. So right here, I'm just going to fade this out a little bit. And I'm going to start laying in my, um, my yellow-orange part of the beak. And then I'm going to let the blue-violet wash over the top of that as well. I'm just softening the edges of some of these with some water. So now I'm going to mix up some my orange, my vermilion, my yellow, and just a touch of burnt sienna. So I'm going to start with my lighter color. Again, the ratio of water here to paint is, the paint is extremely thin. A light value and thin, all right? Now there's a couple spots here that where we have the white kind of poking through and I'm going to make an attempt to let some of that stay there with those bits of white. It's kind of breaking like these different shapes of white just kind of poking through and helping us to define this beak a little bit. Now on the bottom part, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to wash over this whole area with some nice light kind of yellow-orange color. Again, typically with watercolor, we're going to try to work from light to dark. Now, again, when I, wa when I lay this into this previous color, it's just going to tint it a little bit. And again, very, very transparent. I want these colors to run together a little bit. 
I want that paint and the, and the moisture in the paper to do a little of that work for me. that with a hair dryer real quick throw another layer of this kind of purplish red in there again very transparent paint here guys more than mostly we've ever used in, in class more of a transparent version of paint than we've used in class before <clears throat> okay now while that's drying I'm going to kind of work my way over to the the blue area let's start with this area underneath the chin so to speak of the bird I'm going to grab a little bit of the violet and mix it into the cobalt blue I'm also mixing a tiny bit of that black in too. Right after I put this in, I'm just going to use a moist brush and I'm going to soften the edge of this a little. Use that same purple and let this kind of run back into my beak area. And super transparent. some Prussian blue, which is a dark greener blue. So I'm going to start with a lighter value first. And again, a good amount of water in the paint, very transparent. So by being so transparent, I'll have a lighter value of that particular color.
And now I'm just going to kind of put a um, slight outline on the top of the head so we can define it because we're leaving our background nice and light. We're going to leave it white. I'm actually moving my position so I can actually do this in a way that I'm not going to screw it up. So I'm moving over a little bit so I can get a good shot at this. So again, when you're doing something that delicate, guys, what you want to do is get in a position where you can make that flow with your hand and have it be graceful, okay? And as I go down um, the back side of the head here, I'm going to start getting a little darker in value, and I'm going to add a little bit of black to that Prussian blue and darken up that value a bit. I'm going to start darkening a couple of these feather patches on, on the head. And again, very transparent. I'm just going to start easing in some of these darker colors. A good amount of water in my mixture. If I pull some of those strokes, it'll give the illusion of feathers. And very, very easy to get too much water in the heel of your brush. You've got to be a little bit careful there, guys. Again, this is where that transparent color overlaying multiple layers of transparent washes just really really comes to into play in a in a beautiful way I'm going to lay in a little bit of a darker line where the separation of the beak is and I think what I'll do again is I'll be on the safe side and hit it with a, with a hairdryer. And now I'm going to lay in that separation. And again, guys, I want to have fluid mixture in my brush, but I don't want to have so much paint on there that it gets away from me and ruins what I'm doing. So this is going to be kind of swift. And when looking where I'm going, I can do it in two sections, I guess. And I'll come back and I'll hit it again one more time.
I'm going to switch to a, a slightly larger brush now. Again, a really good amount of water in my paint is what I'm looking for. And now I'm going to add some, first I'm just going to kind of blend this edge out with some, some water. And I'm going to try to move kind of quick. I, I, want, I don't really want hard edges here, so I'm going to add water and let this stay soft edged. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab some Van Dyke Brown. Just a touch of Burnt Sienna. Again, it's a very, very transparent mixture of these two colors. And I'm looking for um, just a little warmth in these feathers. Again, super, super transparent, guys. Uh, a, really a ton of water in the paint here. And I'm just going to let these colors run together and ooze into each other. As I get towards the front of the neck, I'm just going to add water, which will make the value a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to soften some of these edges a little with some water. We can start maybe letting our brush strokes give the indication of some feathers just just by gently laying in some strokes directional strokes And as I get towards the bottom, I'm going to fade the bird out with some really loose, free-flowing strokes that are going to kind of define our feathers, all right? I can, I can let a little bit of this sneak over onto the back area as well. Again, you can see how beautiful it is when the, when the colors are super transparent and they blend into each other. And I'm gonna let these colors blend together as well. So we have kind of browns and blues just kind of melding together here, creating this uh, undulating pattern here that just, just really looks really pretty. And again, as I get to the bottom, I'm just gonna let these strokes fade out and create some feathers for me. The main thing is I'm looking for light values here. All right. And I want this to get less important as it gets further away from the, the head of the bird. Throw some of those browns in as well. Now I probably could have done a little better job erasing my pencil lines there, but I'm okay with it. Okay, we're just going to put, um, do a little bit more on these spots that are in the front area of, of the bird's neck. And we're just going to outline 
a little bit with um, our Van Dyke Brown, some blue. I want to kind of create kind of a, a gray bluish, slightly darker value, but not too dark and nice and transparent as well. This is Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of blue and some, some black. So I have these nice, soft, dark areas where the feathers have these kind of spotty areas, which are really cool. There's going to be some little accents we're going to put in. And I don't want to get too dark as I get to the to the bottom. I want this to fade and get lighter in value as we get to the bottom. I don't want to go too dark here. I have some of these accent feathers in the front as well. And then I'm going to concentrate on, on keeping this all nice and soft. So I'll just take a little clean water run it through the edge so it's kind of a nice soft focus going on here grab a little bit more of this dark here now the nice thing about this transparent approach is you can lay some really thin layers of color on and you can always add a little bit more because you're not doing it in you know drastic implements so this can help you to control what you're doing really beautifully right take a little bit more of that um that kind of dark and i'm going to throw it to the back of the neck Looking at a photograph, we don't always have to take things verbatim, especially in watercolor. We can simplify and make things a little more artistic. I'm just going to throw a couple accents on where my feathers are kind of peeling off the top of the bird a little bit. Now again, here we want to have a fluid stroke, but don't overload your brush too much, right? We just want a couple little wisps of feathers here and there to just decorate the outside of the bird and um, kind of punch up where these these little darker bits are. Now one area I think I'm going to hit a little harder with a darker value is back here because they, they do these feathers do get darker. But I do like the kind of light airy feeling that's going on here with this piece. It just has a Really nice feel to it, so I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to accent it a little bit. And try your best to keep those feathers in the back as graceful as you can, guys.
So as I lay this in again, I'm just going to soften it a little bit with some water. I think at this point I'm just going to hit it with a hairdryer real quick. So I'm going to add some of that combination of Van Dyke brown, black, and just water. And I'm just going to kind of wash over this area just a touch. Just kill that color a little bit. Again, I'm just going to soften this edge a little. Clean water and just run my brush through it. Same thing over here. I'd rather have it softer rather than hard edged. Maybe just a little bit more of an accent over here. And the last thing, I'm just going to throw a little bit more of an accent on the separation of the beak. Just a real nice fluid line and just kind of darken up the value of that separation a little bit. I think we can call this one done.